You look at the age, Edwards, 25, one year younger. The reach advantage, it belongs to Paez. Both men, 5 foot 11. And the weight, Paez at 142, Edwards, 139 and a half. Right now, let's go back to arena announcer, Michael C. Williams. Premier Boxing Champions now features four rounds in the lightweight division. At ringside, your three judges, Joel Elizondo, Glenn Feldman, and Larry Hazard Jr. And the referee in charge of the action, Gregorio Alvarez. And now introducing the red corner first. He wears the red, green, and white. As a professional, he's undefeated at 4-0-1. Victory coming by way of knockout from San Antonio, Texas. Introducing Azriel Paez. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green. He's undefeated as well. His professional record, 9-0. With three victories coming by way of knockout from Patterson, New Jersey. Introducing Ricky Edwards. All right, listen, boys, uh, you both been given the pre-fight rules. I want to see a clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Most importantly, obey my commands. You got that? Touch gloves and step back. Azrael Paez and Ricky Edwards. It's an interesting matchup. Two young, super lightweights. Both guys just turning pro recently, and both are undefeated right now, BJ. Just the things that you want to see to take a look. And of course, Paez, very famous as the son of Jorge Paez, the former featherweight champ of the world. As round one starts, scheduled for four. As in Mato Medo Paez? Yes. <laughs> one of my favorite fighters when I was a kid used to love seeing which haircut and which ring color or uh, trunk color he would come in, 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 in the ring with. And just uh, what an entertaining fighter that guy was. I remember his fights with Oscar De La Hoya. I remember his other fights and uh, always liked watching that guy. Edwards coming in here from Patterson, New Jersey, a 9-0 record, three of those coming by way of knockout. Among those that he's trained alongside of, one who was here in the audience earlier, Jamal Charlo, he was a sparring partner with him as well. And he ties Baez up and pushes him to the corner here. Very awkward how whenever Edwards falls in like that, he just really grabs. He doesn't look to uh, get any space or get any range. Just kind of falls in and uh, grabs hold of his opponent. Tall, lanky guy, only three knockouts, so wants to get that left hand going and pick off Paez on the outside. Break, stop. And again, Edwards ties up Paez. Let's go. Strategy, frustration, what do you think? Um, not comfortable fighting on the inside is what I think. Uh, you know, still early in the first round, but you see every time he gets in, he doesn't really look to do anything offensive. Every time. Just wrap the guy up, and uh, Paez is sensing that. Paez 4-0, one of his wins coming by knockout. That's the second time. Let's go. And it wasn't a given that he was going to follow in his champion father's footsteps. He actually did not box for about three years, took off from the sport, and then came back in 2015. <laughs> I see that a lot, you know, kids of, uh, of famous fighters, Chris Eubank Sr. and uh, Chris Eubank Jr. fought tonight in England. Uh, you know, guys go through phases where they get tired of hearing about their father all the time, they take some time off, but still, it's in their DNA, and uh, eventually they, they get back to it sometimes. And Azrael, I'm sure every time he fights, every time he goes into the gym, somebody probably asks him about his dad. I mean, this guy was a star, Kenny, back in the day, and he really uh, riled a lot of people up with his yeah, antics. Yeah, on many levels, he was, he, was a star. A, he was a very good fighter, though. Yeah. Oh, nice combination by Edwards. I'll tell you how good he was. I remember going into the De La Hoya fight. I really didn't know. I was like, man, this is a real test for De La Hoya. De La Hoya ended up knocking him out very early, but uh, Paez was uh, highly regarded at one point. So seconds ticks down here. We've had some great years of a great year of fighting here, the PBC on NBC, and some very interesting and entertaining moments from the corners of the fighters. Let's listen in. And remember, next week,
the best of 2015 of the PBC Saturday, December 19th at 9.30, the fighter of the year, the fight of the year, the top rising star, the top knockout, and the best round of the year. Awards for all and some tough choices. So you want to tune in to see who wins those. It's been a great year of Premier Boxing Champions here. Steve Farhood gives that first round to Edwards, 10-9. Round two, it is Azriel Paez in the white with the colors of Mexico, green and red, and the colors of the U.S. from San Bernardino, California. Spends a lot of time here in San Antonio. And of course, his father, we talked about Jorge, being a very popular fighter in Mexico and being the world champ in the featherweight division at one time. Both of you, listen up. Both of you, you need to get clean. No holding. You got that? No a little holding. bit of a lecture here clean. from the ref. All right. Steve, is that uh, what you'd say at this time, Steve Smoger? Yes, he's trying to take control. It's a very unorthodox fight, so he's doing his best to try to keep it straight. I only see one guy holding, though. I really do. I only see Edwards holding, and uh, you can tell he's uncomfortable on the inside. Every time they get inside, who's doing the holding? There's Edwards again holding as Paez tries to dig into the body. And you can tell because he goes around the back of the arm. So when you do that, you can tell it's, it makes it obvious who's holding. You know, Paez is trying to get his hands free and work in there. So I think the referee's got to be more clear to Edwards that he's not allowed to. Look at that. Gripping with the left arm and taking the other hand behind the back. Now, a direct warning there given to Edwards for holding. Paez tries to come back inside. He's going to lose points in this fight because he's uh, he's very obvious about it. And, you know, holding's a part of infighting, Kenny. You know, there's parts and times when you got to hold and, and do little things here and tie up someone's hands, but this is just too uh, flagrant. He's reaching around the back of his arms. There you go. There you go, man. Let's go. Let's go. And Paez can tell he's uncomfortable in there, but he's still not able to close the distance and uh, make him pay on the inside. Break! Stop, stop, stop. Let's go. Paez corner. No matter Herm say, come on, ref. They want a point deducted right now. Paez tries stop, to go back stop, inside. Stop. And again, Edwards to the corner. tackles right him, basically. He's going to take a point right now. For holding. And Edwards for is acting holding. surprised, but I'm surprised it kind of took this long. One for holding. All right. There was a generic clean, warning man. and then a direct warning to Edwards. Vamos. <laughs> And that's where Edwards needs to be. Stay on the outside, keep his distance. Don't let it Perez or uh, so don't let Paez get inside and uh, get close to him. That was a good right there by Edwards. And now you see Paez getting a little frustrated in the final seconds of round two. Let's check in now with Liam. Kenny, thanks so much. I'm here with the Charlo brothers, Jamel and Jamal Combine, record 50 and 0. All right, listen, you're fighters, but you're both fight fans. You made the trip here to check out everything that's going on tonight. Who's impressed you so far? Uh, DeMarco Antonio, uh, he did an excellent job putting a lot of pressure. Omar Figueroa stood his grounds, but tonight DeMarco impressed me the most. And I think Travis Government put, uh, impressed me the most um, versus Areola, which no one thought he would do as good as he did, and he did. Did you think he won the fight? I did. I thought he won the fight. I thought he did enough to pull it off in the earlier rounds, even though uh, Areola came back in the end. But it was, a, it was a challenging fight. All right. You saw that we're having the award show. All the awards coming out. Top rising star, Errol Spence, is up for that. Yeah. Both of you are up for that as well. And So here's your time. State your case. Top rising star. Why should it be you, Jamal? Oh, uh, well, actually, I think it should be my brother. Um, he had a, uh, a breakout year. He won a world title. He defended it as well. He also stood in the grounds, and you know, if you know his career, you know his uh, what he's been through. Um, it's 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 all it's always necessary to say that he's a, a breakout fighter this year. And you know, um, I just trained hard um, all year long, all last year long. Um, I didn't take really no breaks, um, so. Um, it is what it is, you know. So you're not going to say it's your brother? You're just going to agree? It's, uh, I like that. You're like, that's, yeah, it's honest. You had a big year. Um, my brother had a, a way better year than I did in 14. 15 was a better year for me. And uh, uh, he's, he's a, we staggered ourselves in our career. So we both pulling um, along, you know, pretty good. Yeah, you win the title. You defend the title. We saw that just a few weeks ago in Dallas. We look ahead to the next year. Title shots. How soon should this come? 
um, as soon as you know they put the drawing board up, uh, the WBC, find out what's really going on. Um, I could be. It, it can happen anytime soon. So you know what? We stay in shape. We stay ready. Um, my brother stay in my ear and make sure things are going right. And um, as a team, we work together and make this happen. All right. And both at 154 right now. We've gone over, not going to fight each other. So is this the future? 154 ownership, the Charlo family? Yep. Looks like it's 154. Um, and we do have future eyes on 160 and, um, and up. Making a weight class easy. So it's, it's, it's always um, in our minds to move up and, and wait. And, but no, it's, we're, we're comfortable here. All right, first step, collecting titles at 154. You have yours, you defended yours, you'd like your shot at yours, and then we'll see. Perhaps you guys will move on. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we'll see. Perhaps one of you two will take home Top Rising Star in our award show. Kenny, we'll send it right back to you. All right, thank you, Liam. Talk to the brothers earlier tonight. They, they really are a team and a great bond that they have. Uh, they were watching the fighting action earlier, and uh, it, it really you can you can just tell how special they had these uh, feelings for each other. Those guys look like GQ models. They're not fighters. You know, up there looking all uh, sharp. Those guys always impress me. Jermel Charlo in 2014, good wins over Gabe Rosado and a great win over uh, Marta Rosen. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was a great fight. I was at that fight at the Palms. And uh, Jamal Charlo really bursting on the scene this year with a dominant victory over Cornelius Bundridge. And then his last fight with Silky Wilkie Camper. Good stuff. Meanwhile, Paez here trying to carry some of the action against Edwards. 10-8 that last round. Steve has unofficially scored it. Remember, in that last round, Edwards for holding had a point deducted. And Paez is kind of getting to the point where he's laughing. Every time Edwards gets close to him, he just blatantly just puts his arms around his back and grabs him. And uh, as he's doing there, holding onto that right hand again. Let's go. And it's frustrating to fight a guy like that, Kenny. I'm not going to lie. You know, they lunge in, then when they get inside, they just try to grab you. And, you know, sometimes the ref will uh, take control, but it hasn't really happened in this fight. Final seconds of round three. This one's scheduled for four between these young super lightweights. Right, stop. Stop. And one more round to go. Azrael Paez of the famous surname, his father, a former world champ. Maybe a little frustrated tonight. He's been held more than hit by Ricky Edwards in this fight. <laughs> Not a lot of clean punching going on in this one, Kenny. If it was a grappling contest, I'd, uh, you know, Edwards clear cut decision. He's landed some shots here and there, but hasn't been impressive tonight. They're saying let the, let the hands go in the corner of Ricky Edwards to make sure Edwards has thrown more punches landed more punches more power punches as well throughout this fight and i think he has Paez off his game going back to that very first round when every time they got in close he seemed to wrap him up before he was ever warned about holding he did and you know that what you saw right there ronnie shields in the corner that was a reserved ronnie shields yes uh, the, ronnie's very uh he's gotten uh, very good with his advice but he even he's even he's frustrated over in that corner saying you know let your hands go don't complain about it throw punches well, deciding round here, we believe, this being round four. And Paez in the white coming right back out strong now. Maybe he senses that urgency, and again, Edwards ties him up every time. In this fight here, more holding. You see the left arm of Edwards. He's behind the right arm of Paez. It's just uh, very obvious, and the ref took a point in the second round and really hasn't been consistent with what has followed afterwards. Um, you know, we all just want to see some clean punching. And that's the key for Edwards. If Paez is going to point at his chin like that, go ahead and give him what he wants. Put that jab in that right hand right down the middle. But more holding from Edwards. Earlier tonight, Omar Figueroa Jr. won a tough, unanimous decision, though, over Antonio DeMarco. It was a battle throughout. Uh, Omar has been taken to a hospital here nearby as a precautionary measure. He is all right. This has been relayed to us by PBC personnel. So that is the good news, only a precaution, but Omar Figueroa Jr., after he won his fight, 
did go to the hospital just to be checked out as precaution. And again, the word from the PBC personnel here is that all is okay with him. So that is the good news. Took a lot of clean punches in that fight, Kenny. Incredible work rate, but like we talked about before, when you shoot that many punches and you're always in position like that, you leave yourself open and vulnerable a lot. And uh, DeMarco was able to find that in spots in those later rounds in the fight. It certainly was a very entertaining fight here earlier tonight. Meanwhile, this one has just been a hard fight to get it, to really get the pulse of this fight. Is Paez every time he tries to get inside, and I think he's been a very frustrated fighter tonight. Ricky Edwards has been able to tie him up and keep him off balance, and to Edwards' credit, he's landed some good punches along the way. Yeah, yeah, as he slid in some good shots, but you just see the, the inside game, such a weakness for Edwards, and if you're a fighter, uh, you know, and you're gonna fight Rick, uh, Ricky Edwards, you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna get to the inside. Paez caught with a big shot there. And you wonder here, Baez, can he close this out strong? He's 4-0. and oh. He has one knockout. And now he goes in and tries to work one more time inside on Edwards. Can he do it? Edwards likes to fight exactly where it is right now, and he has Paez reaching. And the holding has really just changed the complexion of this whole fight, Kenny. It's ridiculous. And, uh, Even there, I know. You're right. This is uh, this is a little grappling thrown in with our boxing action tonight here to wrap this up. But Ricky Edwards, his strategy, if that is the case, has paid off. He's looked impressive here. Ringside, they have made their decision. Here's Michael C. Williams with the verdict of the judges. Ladies and gentlemen, for your decision, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Glenn Feldman, sees it 39 to 36. He scores it for Edwards. Larry Hazard Jr. at ringside scores it 38 to 37. He sees it for Paez. Your third and final judge, Joel Elizondo, scores the fight 38 to 37 for the winner by split decision, Ricky Edwards. So Edwards remains undefeated with a split decision victory. Let's go now to Liam.